Critique other people precisely in the measure that you are willing to help them deal with the matter that you've brought forward. So you are totally committed to helping in every way with the problem that, that you're raising. Off you go. Critique all you want. You got a very mild interest in helping the person. Well, then your critique should be very muted. If, as is usually the case, you've got zero interest in helping the person deal with the problem, then keep your mouth shut. Just last week, I was at lovely St. Joseph Abbey, which is in Covington, Louisiana, which is just north of New Orleans across Lake Pontchartrain. I was there to give uh, talks to um, 30 Benedictine abbots of America who had gathered for a kind of retreat, and they wanted to hear me talk about evangelization in relation to the Benedictine life. So it was a great joy to be there. But while I was there, I was able to take in the wonderful artwork of Dom Gregory DeWitt, Maybe not a household name, but a really interesting religious artist. He was a monk from uh, Belgium who spent many years in this country decorating a uh, St. Meinrad Monastery. You'll see many of his paintings there, but his real masterpiece work is done at St. Joseph's Abbey. It's all over the refectory and the, and the monastery and the church. Well, if you look in the apse of the church, he has these great paintings of angels worshiping the Lord, and then they're hovering above as though they're kind of conquering depictions of the seven deadly sins. Interesting composition. But something that's really interesting is DeWitt added an eighth deadly sin conquered by the angels, a deadly sin he thought was particularly prevalent in monasteries, and it was the sin of gossip. Now, I think he's right about monasteries, but I also think he'd be right about pretty much any human organization. I think gossip um, is a poisonous element that arises within almost any human congregation, whether it's, it's a family, it's a corporation, it's a parish, it's a, it's a nation state. And in uh, thinking about gossip, I, I thought right away of Pope Francis, who's made it an important part of his magisterium to speak out against gossip. There are many things I could cite. I want to cite one just from a very recent proclamation of the Pope. Listen to this. Please, brothers and sisters, let's try not to gossip. Gossip is a plague worse than COVID. Worse. Let's make a big effort. No gossiping. <laughs> so, and lest we miss the point, he adds, the devil is the biggest gossiper. Now, that's not just um, colorful rhetoric. The devil's uh, chief names in the New Testament are Hodiabolos, which means the scatterer, and Hosatanas, which means the accuser. I don't know. For my money, that's a great description of the effects of gossiping and the very essential nature of gossiping. It's accusation of another, which results in scattering. Now, in light of all this, too, I recently came across a um, YouTube video by Dave Ramsey, someone I really didn't know. He's a um, speaker on business and financial matters, popular kind of motivational speaker for business people. But this particular video was all about gossip. And Ramsey was, with the vehemence of Gregory DeWitt and Pope Francis, was condemning this poison. And he said he has a zero-tolerance policy for gossip in the workplace. And I thought this was really interesting. He, he carefully defines what gossip is. Here's the way he put it. Gossip is a belligerent and negative commentary to those who have no capacity to deal constructively with the problem that you're raising. Let me say that again. If you're belligerently criticizing somebody, but to people who have absolutely no capacity to deal creatively and constructively with the problem, that's by definition gossip. And it's poisonous, he said, to a business organization, and I would say to any um, human organization. Ramsey actually had a very powerful example of it 
from his own experience. He said he was with the leaders of his corporation. He laid out a whole new approach that he was urging them to take, and he's the CEO, he's the boss. So the meeting broke up, he went out to his car, but then realized, oh, I forgot my keys. Comes back in to the room to discover, which often happens, the meeting after the meeting. Almost all the people were still there, and there was a particular woman who had been at the meeting with her back to the door, and she was addressing them in a very critical way, critiquing the boss. He called her into his office, and he fired her in accord with his zero-tolerance policy. Gossip, not bringing things constructively up the chain of command to those who can do something about it, but rather talking belligerently to those who can't possibly deal with the problem, that's destructive to a business or to any human organization. You know, this is not to say, everybody, that problems don't arise in human communities. They always do. In fact, one of my principles of leadership, based on a few years of doing it, is if there are human beings involved, there will be conflict. This basic principle. So, of course they arise. Secondly, it doesn't mean that you can't bring critiques forward. You can and should, but in the right way. Up the chain of command to those who can do constructively something about it. If you're complaining about you know, the, the IT stuff going on in your business, but not to anybody in the IT organization, or not to anyone up the chain of command, that's just poison. Might I supplement Dave Ramsey with, uh, maybe it's an adage I've shared with you before from John Shea, who was a teacher of mine in the seminary. And Shea said this, and it's always stayed in my mind as a, as a moral principle. He said, critique other people precisely in the measure that you are willing to help them deal with the matter that you've brought forward. <laughs> so you are totally committed to helping in every way with the problem that, that you're raising. Well, off you go. Critique all you want. You got a very mild interest in helping the person. Well, then your critique should be very muted. If, as is usually the case, you've got zero interest in helping the person deal with the problem, then keep your mouth shut. See, gossip could be described as precisely that. I'm, I'm critiquing somebody, I'm raising an objection, but in a way that's completely unconstructive. I, I'm showing zero willingness to actually help the person deal with this problem. That's poisonous to any human organization. How about a final word? As I record these words, we're right on the cusp of Lent. Lent, a time for you know, introspection, a time for prayer, a time for fasting. Well, sure, fast from smoking or fast from sweets or desserts or whatever you want. But can I make a concrete suggestion? How about for the next 40 days? See if you can handle it. See if you can do it. Fast from gossiping. It'll make you and everybody around you happier. Trust me. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I invite you to share it and to subscribe to my YouTube channel.